Congressman, the big news of the week turned out not to be the debate after all. It's the fact that the president, the first lady, have tested positive for coronavirus. Uh, what does that do, not just for the campaign, but how does that affect people in the country, uh, their sense of uh, well-being, uh, even, even the economy? President Trump has been one of the most vigorous, energetic occupiers of the Oval Office in America's history. And I suspect that even though he'll be quarantined and isolating, uh, he'll be doing everything he can to inject that vigor and that enthusiasm into the policymaking choices that the government will be making and the campaign as well. It's just kind of like when the, when the quarterback of the team has to be out for a couple plays, everybody else on the team has to step up uh, until they're right back in calling the plays and, uh, and, and delivering the victories. And I know that'll be the case for President Trump. Let's talk about the debate. Uh, very contentious. Uh, you know, there were moments I felt like if President Trump had just let Joe Biden talk, it would have been better because Joe was uh, doing more damage to himself. But I was shocked by the fact that the president was actually debating both Joe Biden and Chris Wallace throughout the night. Uh, give me your reactions to the debate, how you saw it, how you scored it, and what impact do you think it has uh, on the voters? If you're just a regular American, I think you can only watch that debate and think if your job if your prosperity, if your career were on the line and dependent on some high intense negotiation between world leaders, there was only one person on that stage that you would want having your back, and it is President Donald Trump. If I had any advice for the president, it might be to go watch some of your old debate tapes, Governor Huckabee, because you always found a way to inject humor and sometimes self-deprecating humor, self-effacing humor, uh, but, but you did it in a way that unlocked people to be able to see vision. And I think that what mi missed from the last debate from both candidates was maybe a little bit of lightheartedness, but also you know, sharing more with us about where they wanna take the country, not just two uh, folks uh, you know, complaining and uh, bickering at each other about the worst elements of the status quo, but talking about the greatness of America. The president did that somewhat when he talked about the onboarding of 10.4 million jobs in such a short period of time, something that's never been done in our country's history before. I think we need more of that and maybe a few great Huckabee jokes. Uh, you know, I, I agree, and I do think the humor was missing. The president's one of the funniest people I've ever been around. As you know, you've been around him a lot as well. Uh, let me bring up this book. It's called Firebrand. You've written a brand new book, and it's about your experiences behind the scenes. Uh, you know, Firebrand is a great name for it because that's exactly what you have been. You have been the uh, target of a lot of attacks from the left, um, the press, which I guess I should say the same thing. Uh, they are one and the same. Let's talk about the message of the book. You really do try to, to focus on just what you stand for and why that's attracted such uh, I, I guess, a fiery reaction. <laughs> well, I look forward to the political realignment that President Trump is leading in our country right now, where Republicans aren't just there to be the valets of big businesses. We actually want to put America and the American people first. Now, there are some in D.C. who hope that President Trump is just an aberration, a one-off, but I think he's the front end of the wave. And there is a way to excite a uh, right leaning populism in the country with bold ideas that we won't be able to ever achieve with a reversion back to the Romneys or the Kasichs or sort of the Paul Ryan view of the world. There is a lot in the book, a lot of discussion about how when you put yourself on the front lines of this revolution, you do catch some incoming, but it is so worth it to see our country able to just thrive and to see the American people with a sense of hope and optimism that I think is unique to the Trump presidency, but also something that uh, we will be able to push forward if we continue to move these policies forward that lift up all Americans. Well, the articulation of uh, who we are as a country and who we are as a conservative movement is very clearly uh, depicted in your book, and I think people will totally love it. I, I wanna move to James Comey's testimony before the Senate this week. It was nothing short of remarkable that he sat there, couldn't remember a thing, and you're thinking if he ran the FBI, if he could write books, if he could go on MSNBC every day, but he goes before the Senate and he can't remember whether or not he knew what the FBI was doing in illegally getting a search warrant against Carter Page, who was on our show last week, and others, and targeting President Trump. Will there ever be justice brought in this hideous situation? You know, we all know that this was a hoax 
perpetrated by the Obama-Biden-Clinton regime, that they cooked it up even before the election. And the importance of Comey is that he was really the inside man. He was the person transitioning from the Obama government to the Trump government to try to really effectuate the hoax. And what we all know now is that it was fake. President Trump was never an agent of the Russian government. Russia's never been less relevant, I think, in uh, in my lifetime for sure. I mean, they, they right now have a commoditized economy and they're in a bit of a demographic tailspin. But when you look at uh, the president's approach to the impeachment, his will, his drive to succeed, I think that it can inspire many to keep fighting, but it also exposes those in the media, on the left, and even some Republicans who are willing to indulge the Mueller investigation, uh, and I think indulge James Comey. And we're seeing now that that was all just an endeavor to create punishment in the process. The process was the punishment. They were trying to delegitimize the president, not work with him, or even have a healthy, honest debate with him. We've only got about uh, 15 seconds left, so I'm gonna just ask a very quick one. Will you be in the majority party under Speaker Kevin McCarthy next January, or do we have two more years of uh, Nancy Pelosi's dictatorship? Uh, I hope that we uh, have seen the last of Nancy Pelosi behind the speaker's rostrum. Uh, I think that oh, you know we need a unified Republican majority to fully vindicate the Trump presidency. Uh, it's going to mean big voter turnout. We're going to have to really turn out the vote in a lot of these areas. So even if you think you might not be in a swing state, you might live in a swing congressional district. So make sure to get out and vote. Matt Gates, great to see you. One vote you can absolutely be assured of is mine. You're my congressman, and I'm very proud of that fact and uh, delighted to have you back on the show. Look forward to seeing you soon.